In this screencast, we're going to look at how concentrations, temperature, and type of reactor affect selectivity to form a desired product when we have two parallel reactions. And so let's look first at the rates of these reactions. So let's suppose the desired reaction rate is a rate constant and the concentration of the reactant A squared, whereas the undesired reaction, of course, a different rate constant, and let's say it's first order. And what we're interested in is maximizing the formation of D. So we're going to define selectivity. And this is instantaneous selectivity. So we'll define that as the rate of our desired reaction divided by the rate of our own desired reaction. So let's substitute in these two rates. And of course, this simplifies as the ratio of these rate constants and the concentration of A. So if we want to maximize this instantaneous selectivity, we like the concentration of A to be as high as possible. So this is general that the higher reacting concentration will favor the reaction with the higher reaction order. Now the other thing that is going to affect selectivity is the value of these rate constants and they change with temperature and in general of course the different reactions have different activation energies which means they're going to change at different rates with temperatures. So let's look at a plot of the log of the rate constant versus inverse temperature so we can make this comparison. So I've drawn the case where the activation energy for the desired reaction is larger than the activation energy for the undesired reaction. And therefore, as we raise the temperature, right, and temperature is increasing in this direction, our rate constant gets larger more for the desired reaction, so we're going to favor the desired reaction more at higher temperatures. Now we can write down the equation to make this a little clearer for selectivity. Selectivity for D would be a pre-exponential factor for desired reaction times this exponential activation energy, concentration of A, divided by a pre-exponential factor for the undesired reaction, and then an exponential term with the activation energy for the undesired reaction. Now notice the absolute value of the slope. The plot is steeper for desired reaction because ED is larger than EU. So then we conclude that higher temperature favors the reaction with the higher activation energy. Now, we can also change rate constants for reactions by using catalysts, and indeed most large-scale reactions use a catalyst. And the big advantage of a catalyst, it can change reaction selectivity. It certainly can increase rates of reaction, but it can preferentially increase the rate of one reaction over another. So, for example, let's suppose that we have a catalyst that increased the rate constant for the first reaction, the desired reaction, without really significantly affecting the rate for the second reaction. So let's look at that on this log k versus 1 over t plot. So I've drawn a different line of Remember, this is a log plot, so the rate is much higher with the catalyst. The slope is different. Typically, catalyst decreases the activation energy. But now you can see, if we can find the right catalyst, we can dramatically increase this selectivity. Now, we've said that the concentration of reactant affects selectivity, and the question might be, how do we change the concentration of reactant? And so in some cases, that's by picking the right type of reactors. So I've written down the instantaneous selectivity again. And if we want to keep 
the reactant concentration high as long as possible, then a plug flow reactor or a batch reactor will do that. The plug flow and batch have quite similar behavior. We start out at the highest reactant concentration. And of course, as reaction proceeds, we go to lower concentrations of A. So selectivity would be highest at the beginning. And then the instantaneous selectivity would decrease as we move down the reactor for a plug flow reactor or as time increases for a batch reactor. So we can pick our reactor to increase selectivity. If we had a case where we wanted to favor a reaction that had the lower reaction order in A, if we wanted the low concentration of A, then a CSTR operates at the final concentration, so it's going to favor reactions with the lower reaction order. And then the other type of reactor where we potentially have more control would be a semi-batch. So let's look at a couple parallel reactions and how a semi-batch might give us some advantage. So let's look at these two parallel reactions where now we have two reactants. And the first reaction is second order in A and first order in B. The undesired reaction, the second reaction, is first order in A and first order in B. And if we now again look at our definition for instantaneous selectivity, it's the rate of desired over the rate of the undesired reaction. Again, let me make the substitution. We see the selectivity for the first reaction is first order in A and then dependent of the concentration of B. So if you want to use a semi-batch reactor, see a semi-batch reactor, we should run with A initially in reactor and then continually add B as a means to create a high concentration of A.